And so last week, as we uh, wrapped up the sermon, uh, we talked about the need for, for God's people to have a military mindset. We talked about the fact that, that we're in a war. Uh, this might seem like a peacetime uh, with all the conflicts that we have going on, uh, militarily speaking. And it might, it might seem like you're not a part of any of those things. But there's always a spiritual war going on. Amen? Amen? And so we talked about the fact that we have to uh, get God's uh, battle plan for our life every day. Every day we wake up, we need to know what God wants us to do. Amen? Where he wants us to go, what he wants us to say, who he wants us, us to encounter. Amen? Uh, we we got to get, get in that uniform. Amen? Put on the full armor of God, right? Ephesians 6. Uh, 10, 11. We got to have uh, that mindset. We got to let the, the peace of God uh, keep our mind. Uh, Philippians 4, right? Uh, verse 7. And we got to give our testimony. We got we to gotta share uh, what God has done for us with others because uh, we overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Revelation 12 and 11, right? Amen. And so uh, you say, well, I did all those things. Right? I did, I took your advice, I did all those things, but I'm still, I'm still in a dark place. I'm still going through uh, the thing I was going through. I'm still dealing with the same issues, same people, same circumstances, the same situations. I took your advice. Every morning I woke up and I asked God, what is it, Lord, that you would have me to do today? Amen. And then I got a word and, and I walked those things out. Amen. I, I made sure I had on that the helmet of salvation and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Down to the uh, the feet that were pre prepared for the preparation of the gospel. I had I had everything on. Amen. I didn't leave anything at home. I, I was full, fully in full battle dress. Amen. From the top of my head to the bottom of my head, I had everything. And then I relied on the peace of God to keep my heart and my mind. And I shared my testimony every opportunity I got. But, but at the end of the week, I'm still where I was at. I'm still in the dark place. Amen? Amen. If that's you, uh, then I, I believe that God has a word for you. And that's you. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's get into it. Um, just like the enemy uses psychological warfare uh, to turn the heart of Hezekiah last week, we had the Assyrian. He was talking to uh, Hezekiah's uh, delegates. Telling them how uh, Hezekiah didn't didn't like them, didn't love them. How uh, uh, it would, would be better for him to defect and come over to the Assyrian side. How much pain and misery they were going to suffer and go through if they stayed with Hezekiah. His, his, his job, his plan was to turn their hearts from Hezekiah to, to him. And that's, that's what the enemy wants to do with us. Uh, he wants to turn your heart away from God and to him. Amen? He wants to turn our hearts. And he'll do and say anything. Amen? And sometimes what he says is true. Right? You don't deserve it. You, you don't earn it. Uh, you're not worthy. You're not good enough. And then, then he, can, he, can, he can remind us of, of, of the things that we did that, that disqualify us. Amen. Amen? You see it on your wife. You cheated on your taxes. You, you speed. You lie. You was in the club last night. You was drunk. You, all this stuff is true. We did all those things. Amen? It's true. I'm guilty. I deserve to die. For the Bible says, the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. But for the grace of God, we all stand here. We all get it. Amen. None of us are innocent. We all did. So when the enemy comes at us and he says, you did this, he says, he's right. You did it. You did that. You said that. You went there. He's, he's right. I did. I did all those things. I said all those things. I even thought some of them. Amen. But to those that are in Christ, there's no more condemnation. Amen. Somebody paid the price for me. Somebody paid the price for you if you're saved. Amen? So when he comes to me and he says, you did those things, I know. But God. Amen? First John 1 and 9. One of my favorite verses, right? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. I think that's the moment. I've been, I've, I'm, 
And yeah, I did all that. I confess. <laughs> I did all those things. I said all those things. I was that person. But God says, I mean, all things know. Amen? So I got, I got a new mind now. Amen? I got a new life now. This is, this is the new me. Amen? This is the new me. A new birth. A new citizenship. Amen? I'm no, I'm no longer that old guy you're talking about. You sent me up to the wrong place. I'm not even there no more. I mean, you're making phone calls to my old number. I'm not even thinking, that's not even my number anymore. And so when uh, they come to the Israelites and they say what Hezekiah is doing and not doing, they, a lot of that stuff's true, amen? They're still in a dark place. They're besieged by the uh, Assyrian army. A lot of, so what, what, what the people are saying is true, amen? But just like they do, did that in the Bible days, that's still going on now, amen? But, but we don't always realize it, amen? It's on, it's on our radio stations. It's on our televisions. It's on social media. That's why God called the fast that he called. I wouldn't call it fast. I, I, I like my little gadgets. Amen? I like checking my, my likes and my, my hits and all those things. Whatever you call it. I, I like that. I like going on there and just, you know, happy birthday. You know, happy anniversary. I like, I like all that stuff. Keeping current, if you will. Connected to all my friends. Amen? I like that. Most of us do. But that's how the enemy, that's an that's a, a, a open door where the enemy can come in and subliminally uh, do some things. Drop, drop some nuggets on you. Amen? Turn, slowly turn your heart from God. Amen? That, that's how wars are fought. Amen? They, they will use uh, radio personalities to play music, but to also uh, send messages. Uh, like North Korea uh, used uh, Soul City Soup. That's what the, the GIs call it. GI means uh, government issue. That's what the, the, the men, uh, the soldiers call it. The, the radio personality that they used in North Korea. In Japan, they used uh, Tokyo Rose. Uh, the Nazi Germans used Alex uh, Savvy. And Vietnam used Hanoi, Hanoi, Hannah. I'm saying that right, okay. And Dad knows he was there. And so I want to play, uh, I want to play a clip from that. This is an actual radio broadcast from the Vietnam War era. <laughs> Yeah. 
right? So they will have transistor radios, right? Remember those back in the old days with antennas? And they would broadcast these, uh, they would have these radio stations. And they would play music. And a lot of the music that they played during, during the Vietnam era were uh, anti-war songs. Amen? Uh, you know, war. Dun, dun. What is it good for? Absolutely. And that type of stuff, right? And so, <laughs> I'm not going to sing this time. But that's what they did. And the Vietnam War went from November the 1st, 1955 to April the 30th, 1975. 20 years. Imagine listening to that all day long for how long you're over there. You're over there for three years. You're over there for four years. You're over there for five years. You're over there for two years. You're over there for six years. And this is what you hear every day. And you are in the box office. You are in the MREs. And your, your president is on the golf course. Your, your president is eating T-bone steaks. Your president does seem to not care about you. Never, never visited. Never coming over to see how you're doing. Never writing you a letter. Never, never calling you on the phone to say, hey, I just called to check on how you're doing. Never. And, but, and you're hearing this all day long. That's how it is with the, with the Christians. You're over here in enemy land. You're, you're, you're in this land, but you're not of this land. You're in the world, but you're not of the world. So every day you hear messages like that. You just, we just don't realize it. We think it's normal. Amen. Uh, ain't nothing wrong with living. Amen. You only live once. Amen. Enjoy yourself. We make songs. They make. They got songs about enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> I mean, they do. And we listen to it. And we go to the club, and yeah. you know, we hang out with them all day, twenty years listening to that. You don't think that's gonna do something to you? That, that's not gonna plant some doubt in your mind. Go, go back into the, the Garden of Eden with, 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 with Eve. How long did Satan uh, come at her? We don't know. We got the one, one written account. But I'm sure that wasn't the first time they talked. Amen? I'm sure he, uh, they, they had a relationship. Uh, they had been talking for a while. And so when it comes to this point, he's already in there. Amen? He's already turned that mind. He's already got some doubt, man. And so when he comes with, with this gesture, that's just phase two. Amen. So, so let's look at let's look at Absalom uh, and the voice of a son to his father in, in 2 Samuel chapter 15. And I don't have to go too deep in this because we went through this when we went through the book of 2 Samuel. Uh, and if you weren't here, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not going to be telling you something that you probably never heard. Amen. You, you, you read the Bible before you've been in church. Uh, so you've heard these stories. Amen. Uh, it's the account of when Absalom, uh, as we read in the opening text, he turns the heart of the people uh, from David to him. Right? And so I'm, I'm just going to um, give you some uh, background information. We're going to go. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm going to start you off in uh, chapter 13. All right? Don't turn there. I'm just going to give you some statistics. Okay? Uh, in chapter 13, David's firstborn son, Amnon, raped Tamar, his half-sister, uh, a crime punishable by death under the Judean law. Should have been killed. Uh, Tamar was Absalom's sister. Uh, David does nothing. He doesn't punish anybody. He doesn't kill anybody. He does nothing. Uh, Absalom waits two years. Then he himself kills Abner. Uh Then he flees to Geshar, Geshar, uh, which is in Hebron. David allows him to return after three years, uh, but he says, I, he can't see me. I don't want to see him. So he gets to come back, but he has to stay in his house. Uh, Absalom was there for two years. He sent a message to Joab, which, who is uh, David's uh, commander, field commander. Uh, but he doesn't respond. He ignores him. And so uh, uh, Absalom sends his people over to Joab's uh, field, and they burn it up. Then Joab comes to see uh, Absalom. Um, then he goes to David for Absalom, and David allows him to return. Um, that brings us to 2 Samuel 15. Caught up, right? Good? Okay. Uh, so when we look at chapter 15, uh, verse 1 says that he spared no expense to act and look like he looked apart. So he, he's building up his 
uh, repertoire, he's getting his team together uh, and, and employed to take over the kingdom. And, no, everybody with me? Everybody? I ain't losing nobody. Yeah, chapter, chapter 15. Chapter 15. Yeah. He says, And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run ahead of him. So he, he spends uh, the money, uh, he buys the stuff, he gets the personnel to make it look like he's about to become king. Right? Adonai is dead. He's the firstborn son. Uh, there's a second son, but we don't hear anything about him. So it's, it's presumed that he's dead. So Absalom is uh, the heir to the throne. Right? And so uh, it would appear that David is, is, is allowing him to uh, go through his training uh, like the MITs are doing here at the church. And, and, and he's going to promote him eventually. That's what it looks like to the world. Amen? He's got the chariot. He's got the men running in front of him, and uh, it looks good. It looks like it's supposed to look. Like it's about, a transition is about to happen, and uh, Absalom is going to be king. Right, amen? Uh, in verse 2, uh, he places himself at the gate before the people can get to uh, David, right? And he cuts them off. And he says, hey, uh, where are you from? And he says, I'm from so-and-so place. And he says, oh, man. Uh, nobody is here to see you. Uh, you got a good case. Uh, nobody's here to see you. If I was uh, in charge, then that would be different. We, we, we would take care of you. Uh, so he doesn't say that the king doesn't love you or the king doesn't care about you or come over to my side. He doesn't say any of that stuff, but it's implied. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, David is, is a bad king. David don't care about you. Amen? Uh, you should come over here on Absalom team. When I'm the king, Oh, that's going to be different. I'm going to make sure you take care of it. Amen? So he, he did this for four years. Imagine you have an issue that, that you're supposed to be able to go to the king with and get it addressed. And you go to him, and four years later, you still got the same issue. You, nothing. You haven't even got to talk to anybody about it. How you feeling? You haven't even seen the king. You haven't even seen any of the king's people. Every, every time you go, this guy cuts you off and tells you nobody's in there to see you. And he's the king's son, so you gotta believe him. Amen. The king don't care. It's been three, it's been three and a half years. How long is the king? How long am I have to put up with this mess? Amen. Why won't the king see me? Amen. He did this for four years. Um, and at the end of the four years, he says to uh, David, I want to go back to Hebron uh, to make a pay up out. And David says, okay, go, go to Hebron. So he goes back to Hebron, and he takes all these people with him, hundreds of people with him. And then he calls in some key personnel from David's cabinet to make it seem legitimate. And most of the people don't know what's going on. They just hang out, right? He hires some people. He said, hey, when you hit the trumpet, say, Absalom is king. And that's when we're going to roll in. David gets word of it, and, and instead of fighting for the, for the kingdom, he, he, he flees. He doesn't want to fight his son. Remember we talked about that? He doesn't want to fight his son. So he leaves. Absalom moves in. Absalom is the king. Right? All Absalom did, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't make anything on the radio. He didn't put out no pamphlet saying that David sucked and he was either the man. He didn't talk. He didn't say anything negative about David per se. But he put doubt in their heads. Amen? He allowed the people to not be able to get the judgment or the justice that they needed. Amen? He, he got in between the people and the king. Amen? You don't need a king. You can see me. And they would bow down to him. Instead of him letting them bow down, he would catch him and kiss him. You know, kiss him, give that, 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 that godly kiss. And, and doing so, he, he, he uh, warned their hearts. Yeah. Amen? They love him now. David was the king. David saved them. They were protecting them. Amen? Don't that sound like us? We have a king that, that saved us. We have a king that protects us. But there's another person that's bound for your heart. There's another person, there's another entity, there's another organization, there's another kingdom that wants you. They, they want you on their team. And they would say to you, you've been dealing with this for four years and you're still in the dark place. If you look at um, 2 Samuel 15, 23, I'm going to read this one and I'm going to wrap it up, okay? <laughs> I ain't going to be reporting too much, but I'm spreading it up. I, 
I got this tight shirt on. This is terrible. <laughs> but I want to read this first, okay? Second Samuel 15, 23. And I want to I want to read it for, for a reason. Uh, and all the country wept with a loud voice. And all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kidron. And all the people passed over towards the way of the wilderness. Now this is the same brook that Jesus crosses over. Amen? Uh, or when he's about to be crucified. Uh, amen? Uh, Kidron means dark. So David is going into a dark place. And you say, I did everything you said last week, but I'm still in the dark place. Amen? And so, um, David is going over into a dark place. But what I want to remind you of that is that everything that we go through here is, 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 is the temple. I said a couple of weeks ago, it, it came to pass. Everything that you're going through is going to pass. Amen? You might be depressed right now, but that's going to pass. You're not always going to be there. Amen. You might be in some financial issues right now, but that's going to pass. You won't always be there. Amen. You might have some other hardship. Maybe, maybe it's uh, uh, your health, but that's going to pass. I promise you, it's going to pass. It's going to pass. If you read the, if you keep reading in, in 2 Samuel, you'll see that David comes back to Jerusalem. His, his enemy is defeated. He comes back to Jerusalem. What's the point? Why, why are we talking about this? You're in a dark place, but God's going to bring you back into peace. Amen. God, the same God that's been protecting you and keeping you, is going to continue to keep you and protect you, even in that dark place. And he's going to bring you back into a place of peace. Jerusalem means teaching of peace. Amen. You might say that's a place of peace. And God wants to bring us back there, as long as we don't tap out. As long as we don't give up. That's what the enemy wants. That's why the enemy plays stuff on the radio. Yo, 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 government doesn't care about you, GI. They sent you over here to die, GI. They're going to give you a medal, when you, when you, when you, but only when you're dead, GI. Your planes, your own planes are going to bother you, GI. Every day I'm listening to this stuff. Every day we're listening to this stuff. Amen? Voluntarily. <laughs> They're over there with their transistor radios, but they turned them on. The enemy is transmitting, but they we turn it on. We ain't even got to hear most of the mess that we hear. We ain't even got to go through half of the mess we go through. Most of the dark places that we end up in, we don't even have to go. David does not have to leave Jerusalem. He could defeat Absalom in Jerusalem. But he got a heart for the people. Right? If we fight, if there's a war in Jerusalem, a lot of lives are going to be lost. Include my son, who hates me and wants to kill me, but I love him. I love my son. I love my son so much that I send my son, I come down and I get on the cross. That's how much I love my son. Don't that sound like us? That's what God did. God loves us so much that he would take off all his royalty, his, all his glory, and he'll come down walk around for 33 and a half years and, and get up on the cross. And not just get up on the cross, get up on the cross and die. For you. For me, you know we ain't worthy. You know we don't deserve it. You know we didn't earn it. That's the king that we serve. So why would I give that up to be a part of somebody else's kingdom. Why would they leave David, who's taken care of them, fought Goliath, fought the Philistines, built all these fortified cities for him, and go with Absalom, who's not nothing, but lied to him? The enemy, our enemy, is the father of lies. The father, he just don't lie. <laughs> he, he's got the thing perfected. He'll take a little bit of truth and put a little bit of lie and he'll give it to you. And we turn on the transistor radios <laughs> ourselves. And we hear this mess all day, every day. Amen? Amen. Psychological warfare has been around since the creation of man. In the Garden of Eden, the enemies in there whispering in Eve's ear. So it's no. It's not by happenstance that when I leave this place, I'm turning on my radio and I'm getting some stuff. 
when I get to my house trying to watch the game, I'm gonna see some stuff. Amen. We're in enemy ter territory. The Vietnam War was 20 years, but how long have I been living? Don't say, don't answer. Uh, I've been living in this world <laughs> for my whole life. Haven't you? You were born in enemy territory. This is not our home. Amen? This is not our home. When the Vietnam War ended, they, they came back. They were spit on. They were despised. People wanted to fight us. Do harm to them. They over there serving their country. Some of them have never been welcome back. Never. Jesus was spit on. Jesus was despised. For us. They did that for us. Dad did that for us. So the least I can do is be grateful. Amen. Give it up for our Lord and Savior.